everybody, we're back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's Mike. In Milwaukee. I'm Ed. In Milwaukee. Yep. I mean, we are <laughs> and, sitting right next to each other. And this is coming from Milwaukee. Milwaukee! This is the Rock Cut Review. Yes. So this is this is a one I'm kind of excited about because we get to talk about the intricacies of producing whiskey. And when that's, he that's, says we, he means him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's something I love to do. But, All right. uh, so what does it take to be a whiskey producer? So... Um, did you know that not everyone who makes whiskey is a distiller? Define that for me. Right. (laughs) So. (laughs) Wow. So, okay. So, basically, you have uh, someone who makes whiskey, right? Who actually produces the whiskey, who works a still. Right. That person is a distiller. Okay, so I'm okay. a guy in Tennessee with a still out back. I am a distiller. Well, you're a moonshiner. But I'm yeah, a moonshiner. That involves yeah. distilling. I'm getting some corn. I'm yeah. getting a bunch of sugar from the local grocery store. Right. I'm making a bunch <laughs> of sour mash, and I'm enjoying the hell out of myself. Right. Okay. So now... I'm a distiller. You're a distiller. Sure. So now a distiller, right, produces yeah. whiskey themselves. Oh, yeah. But there's also something called a non-distiller producer. Okay, so this came up because of a previous video we did. Um, now we were talking about Tyler Boone's Boone's bourbon, right? Sure. Okay, I remember and it well. Now here's the thing about Tyler Boone's bourbon is that this is a brand, right? That is okay. owned by a company called Local Choice Spirits. Right. So Tyler Boone, he sold a stake of this brand to Local Choice Spirits, and he's there. He's a minority stakeholder now. Okay. They run his brand, cool. right? Um, I wish we could do that. Right. We, well, we could if we really wanted to. <laughs> and we'll get into that. Yeah. Um, but, so then, Local Choice goes to Striped Pig Distillery in the Carolinas. Okay. And they say, hey, we need you guys to make us a bourbon with X, Y, and Z. Okay. Right? And a little magic and a unicorn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, this this was a point of, uh, of uh, contention, contention okay. with Tyler. Because Tyler insisted he's a distiller. Okay. Someone pointed out in one of our last videos that he was saying, oh, MGP and Angel's Envy and all of them, they use our supersonic, ultrasonic process. Right. We realize now, we think he was mistaking the sonic process with sourcing. Because those brands all source. Sure. Right? Or yep. did in the past. Yep. Yep. So, what what it is, is that you are getting liquor from a, someone else's distillery. Okay. So my moonshine operation, your I moonshine. give to you. I buy your moonshine. Okay. And then I put it in a bottle with my own label and sell it as my product. And is that proper and legal to do? Well, here's the thing. It's been going on since forever. There we go. It's been going on since since whiskey became a commercial product. Everyone's been doing it. Okay. So let's, let's talk through the history of it a little bit. We've got a couple here. We've got an Irish and a Scotch, right? And the Irish and the Scotch were the first ones to do this. So this is a blended Scotch. Now, oh, and actually, make sure you watch Friday for our review of Martin's, Martin's VVO. <laughs> yeah, free D. Uh, and if, if future Eddie's smart, he just put a he just went back and added a, a card in here. I don't know if he actually did. Um, but so Martin's VVO, right? Yeah. They this is a Glen Morangy brand, mm-hmm. and then they took. Glen Morangy malt whiskey, and they bought grain whiskey from a distil- another distillery. Sure. So, Gervin or North British or whom- whomever. And then they took the two? And they blended them. Okay. They put them together. And that's the thing. People have been doing this forever because back in the day, 1800s, you, were just, you weren't selling single malt yourself. You sold single malt or malt and grain whiskey to uh, a grocer. So, guys like Johnny Walker... Uh, the guys behind Green Spot, these were all guys who owned stores. Sure. And they'd, um, they'd get the barrels of whiskey, and they'd sell you whiskey straight from the barrel. With a big dipper. A big dipper, <laughs> or, or like a little tap. <laughs> and they figured out, hey, if I take these whiskeys I've got, and I blend them all together, I can make a consistent product. Oh, smart guys. Right? Yeah. That people really dig. And then I put my name on it. So it's never too bad, never too good, just kind of middle just, of the road. Just where you need it. Yeah. Because because a single malt brand at that time, you it might be inconsistent. You know, you might not get consistency in the barrels. Sure. Unless you blended them together and you blended them with grain whiskey. Right. So now, fast forward to the to the to the current day, right? Okay. 
And yep, we're there. <laughs> and you and they're still doing this. So in Scotland, you've got independent bottlers who are buying malt whiskey straight from the source. I would. And then they're they're bottling that just as it is. Okay. Which is cool because now you get to taste something that might be different from what a distillery puts out normally. Okay. Um, and I don't have the problem of the still blowing up in my garage. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, and then you've got your blenders, like Johnny Walker. Well, there you go. Who are still making blended whiskey. And then you got guys like Drunken Sailor. Um, but so they're buying this. They're buying barrels from probably Bushmills, blending it all together themselves. Right. And then selling it under their own brand. I would too. Yeah. Initially. Yeah. Until I could figure out my own formula, get some space, yeah, or order some yeah. equipment, yeah. and that's that's what a lot of people are doing. Is especially in Ireland right now, it, because you have to wait three years for your for your whiskey to mature. Um, if I can, in a, as a stopgap measure, I'll buy whiskey from somebody else, sure. release it under my label, and then and then while when, my own is well, my own is aging. Yep, and then kick out my own and exactly. hopefully it's something similar. Yep, I got a question. Yeah. If we were to be a startup distiller, mm -hmm. producer, distributor, all that, what kind of scratch are we talking about? Oh my God. Roughly. Oh God, I have no clue. <laughs> I don't know, depending on how have, big your thing we're is. We're going to have to look this up. And, you it's, know, yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous. Well, and you got to remember. It is ridiculous. It's, it's, well, because you're sitting on stock for three years. You got yep. all the barrels, you got all the equipment, you got all the personnel, you got yeah. marketing, you got. I mean, yeah. it's got to be. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's the thing. In the United States, right, if you want to become a distiller, yep. you have to get a federal license, a state license, and occasionally a local license. Um, and that federal license, you have to tell them exactly what the layout of your, of your place is going to be, where you're going to be aging, where you're going to be distilling, what kind of equipment you're using. Um, they got to do basically a full background check on you. And <laughs> you got to tell them how... You're going to keep people from stealing your stuff. How are you going to keep your employees from stealing your stuff? How are you going to keep it all from catching fire? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, you know, and then and then you got to go to the state and you got to say the same thing. Right. And not only then, once you've got all that figured out and you've done all the paperwork and you paid them all, then you got to go to the TTB and say, here's the formula of our whiskey that we're making. And then the TTB has to approve the formula and has to approve the label. Wow. So even even if you yourself you're not distilling it, um, you know you're. So in in this case, let's talk about Uncle Nearest real quick. Uncle Nearest. So this is Uncle Nearest. We did a review on it. Um, Liked it. Yeah, we. This is great. This is yeah. one of Erica's favorites. Um, but so Uncle Nearest, as a non-distilling producer, had to get a license. So they had to get a license. Kind of like a license an actual distiller would get. Okay. Um, now they didn't have to tell. They had to tell them where they were getting the spirit from and all that. They didn't have to and the premises and where they were bottling it. You know, sure. all that crap. They had to get the label approved. They didn't really have to tell them like this is how we're distilling it because right. they're not distilling. These it. are the safety precautions. Blah, right. Blah. Um, so they had to get a license, same as anybody, to buy and bottle this. Right. Sure. Now, in this case, they didn't. Te they can't tell us where the distillery is um, because legally the distillery asked them not to, or something sure. like that. Yeah. Um, but we know that it's probably George Dickel. It's probably that's the Tennessee whiskey they're getting. Okay. Um, so that's going on a lot right now in America, and that's you know when I I said Ireland and Scotland a mm -hmm. little bit different from yeah. from America. Because right now in America, there's a lot of big producers who are making a ton of whiskey to sell to non-distiller producers. Sure. One of the biggest being, can you guess? <laughs> is it down in Indiana? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. Um, Our so. favorite mega distiller? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so what we have here is Rossville Union, right? Mm-hmm. Rossville Union comes from Midwest Grain Producers, um, which is MGP. This is their distillery's brand. Sure. So it, this one isn't a source brand. But this same juice, uh, it was a, like a 95% rye mash. This has been in everything. Bullet rye, <laughs> uh, High West, um, Angel's Envy rye. Yeah. 
So they're, they are selling this. You can buy this uh, by the barrel, so you can age it yourself. Right. Or you can, you know, just buy the liquid if you want to. You know, and they've got, like, they've got different mash bills, right? So they'll they'll sell you, hey, we've got 95% rye, 5% malted barley, and we've aged it for three years, and we'll sell it to you at this price. And they've got a list of all the different bourbons and ryes uh, they're making. Sure. So, like, the, their so bourbon. So go in say, I want a 51% rye with, you know, yeah. that much other grains and this much Marley Bolt. Mar- Bolted barley. barley. Or b- Marley Bolt. Bolt whatever. Marley Bolt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like a supermarket. Right. Oh. Right. Kind of. How kind of. That? I mean, would usually... I, would I buy it and then tweak it? You can. Okay. Well, like, so Angel's Envy. Yeah. They're buying barrels of rye, and then they're aging it in something else. Oh, yeah, I remember. So they'll take their rye whiskey, sherry cask. put it... Well, uh, the bourbon is the sherry cask. Oh, that's right. They'll take their rye whiskey, put it in rum cask. Okay. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Um... So, and then other people, they'll take barrels of this stuff, like Crowded Barrel. They took barrels of bourbon from uh, MGP, took them down to Texas, aged it in the Texas heat. Sure. Yeah. Which changes it substantially. Yep. So, so like and, a whole different product. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, the thing is, even those individual barrels just coming straight out of the, straight out of MGP, those mm-hmm. individual barrels are going to taste different from each other. So depending on how you blend them, you might get a completely different whiskey. Sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, here's the rub, though. Oh. Here's the problem <laughs> you run into. The problem isn't that people are sourcing whiskey because there are some delicious source whiskeys. Uncle Nearest is pretty dang good. Mm-hmm. Like this is fantastic stuff. Uh, this is okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was gonna say. But people, <laughs> people are taking like this stuff, and then they're bottling themselves. And they're not being totally honest about where they're getting it. Ah. So they're trying to come up with a story like, oh, this is our recipe from a, a, a bootlegger who was my grandfather who, who fought a shark. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And, and so they're, they're not being totally open about sourcing. If you're sourcing your whiskey, that's totally cool. Because a lot of people do it. A lot of people do it. a good way to get a start. And they're making a ton of good stuff. Like, even, right. if, even if that's your whole business, if you're making good whiskey, what do I care? Right? True. Right. Yeah. Um, the issue becomes when you're not totally open about it. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people, they own, like, a space where they're blending and bottling this. And they're calling themselves a distiller or a master distiller. But they're not. But they're not actually no. distilling. They are buying someone else's liquid. And putting it in a bottle. Which, again, if you want to call yourself a bottler, an right. independent right. bottler, you want to call yourself a blender, a blender yeah. that's fantastic. That's oh, awesome. Oh, I'm a blender. <laughs> <laughs> that's totally cool. But don't pretend you're a distiller. One last thing we, I do want to talk about. So this is this is a little bit different from everything else. It's smaller? It is smaller. <laughs> it's quite deep. Uh, Winchester. Winchester bourbon. That is the one that was aged and then ultrasonically aged, mm-hmm. if I remember right. Yep. And uh, it had a little uh, peaty taste. No, no, no that's a, that's you think of something else. But okay, uh, this is this is actually their six month old. Do you want to give this one a try? <laughs> now this is a little different from the other ones. Okay, because it's younger. It's younger. Yep. But it's also a store brand. Okay. So this particular brand is made by Terra Pure Distillers. Or Terra Pure Spirits out of North Charleston, South Carolina. But they make it specifically for Total Wine. So you can only uh, buy Winchester Bourbon, Winchester Extra Smooth Bourbon Whiskey, yeah, Total, Total Wine. wine. Yep. Which, uh, can we, we've run into problems with that kind of situation in the past. Have we? Well, I was thinking about the... Uh, Wyoming whiskey that we Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a little different. A, a barrel pick is a little different. Sure. Because a, okay. a store, a barrel pick, you go out and you buy something that right. has the, the guy, right. the distillery's brand on it. Sure. And then they sell that barrel specifically at your store. Right. This is a brand that is specifically made just for one store. Okay. Yeah. So anybody can buy a barrel pick. Right. Only Total Wine can get Winchester bourbon. Okay. Yeah. But uh, this is 
Six months? Six months old. Not as dank as I would have no. thought. No, not at all, right? <laughs> no. Right? Right. Like, it's, I will There's say. No, none of the petroleum ass. It doesn't smell like diesel. Um, it, it's actually kind of sweet and fruity. Yeah, got some light notes. Yeah, so this did go through the ultrasonic aging process that they do with all the TerraPure stuff. Um, there's a video on it if you want to check that out. You know, for six months old, that is not bad. Yeah, right. It's a little sandalwood like. It's a little. It's <laughs> it's solventy. Sol- yeah, yeah, okay. It's got a little bit of that solventy. It's like a, like, yeah, yeah, paint shop. Just a touch, just a touch, but not anywhere close to what I would think. Yeah, I would think six month old bourbon. They should take like socks and paint thinner. There's a little bit of that here. Touch it, but but <laughs> not, not. It doesn't. I don't think it does. I think it. Taste that again. Mm. Mm. Yeah, there's just a, there's a tiny little touch of the old stuff, or not the old stuff, the young the young stuff. Yep, yep. But really, it doesn't really have much taste. Period. It's just kind of light and sweet. Okay, it's not my go-to. Not I wouldn't say it's my go-to, but it's it doesn't smell super bourbony. It kind of smells like a just like a, a sweeter rye, if anything. It's really got no yeah. All right, Drunken Sailor's not a great one. No, and in comparison. This one's way sweeter. The yeah. Winchester's way sweeter. But not this. Uh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Drunken Sailor does does come off as much nicer, kind of kind of buttery. Yeah, kind of full-flavored. Full-flavored. Yeah. This, but again, six months old. That's incredible. That is really pretty cool. I mean, I got to say, I think Terrapure guys might be winning me over on this ultrasonic stuff. <laughs> I'm not there yet. <laughs> yeah. You know, I like the romanticism of yeah. aging barrels and sitting out in the open and catching sea salt and yeah. hay and, you know, yeah. all the fragrant pollens in the air. And, yeah. You know, there's something about old style whiskey mm. production. No. I get that. I get yeah. that. And I wouldn't say this is the best. No. I, 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 it's not. It's not. Not a go-to. It's not a go-to. But for a six-month-old bourbon, this is this is not bad. I think I think that's probably where Terra Pure shines. C- considering it's six months. Considering it's six months old. Yeah. Terra Pure, I gotta say, they are might be onto something. We'll see. I think I think what Terra Pure is probably gonna be best at is taking away, like making really bad tasting stuff palatable. Okay. I don't know if it's gonna taste make good stuff. Into Better. excellent stuff. Yeah, the good stuff might just have to be aged normally. Yeah. But if you're making, looking to make a quick little thing, sure. and you want to make it decent, so if I take a three year, I throw it through the Terra Pure, it might be decent. It might, it might, it might, might be yeah. decent. But I think if you take a ten year old and you run through the Terra Pure, you're not gonna pick so much up. You're not gonna. I don't know <laughs> if that's gonna help. Yeah, we're gonna find out. Yeah, so, somebody, somebody will do it somewhere down. Somebody the will. So, yeah. but yeah, so that is. That was a little quick review and a breakdown of non-distiller producers. Um, I think the end, my, my opinion, just just be honest about it. Know what you're talking about and be honest about it. Like, so, not translucent, but transparent. Transparent. <laughs> just, just tell people, man. Like, no, one, no one's going to hate on you if, if, like, you just tell folk. But True. Yeah. Anyhow. This is the Rock God Review. Right, and I hope we all learned something here today. I know I did. Yeah. Right, and I hope you, you next, all did. <laughs> I, think, I think for like next week's video, I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to say a single word. Ooh. i got to go completely silent because I've talked way too much the past couple of weeks. And I'll carry the load. I'll think of something yeah, cute. Yeah, yeah, you should. You should take over the next one. You do it, and I'm just going gonna, gonna to hang out for the ride. All right, that's cool. <laughs> Uh, I so will, I will find something for a worst whiskey watch Wednesday. Let's do it. Yeah. So until then, hey, stay rotten. Yeah. <laughs> we we still keep messing that oh, up. Oh yeah. All the time. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>